Great, thank you. Welcome back, everyone. This is Robert from Custodian File. Today is November 2nd. We're gonna start off with some Ospreys. I'm gonna show you, uh, I don't know, eight or 10 videos of Ospreys coming in, radars being triggered. They're coming over Marina Del Rey, same scenario. Uh, I think in this one, I just left the camera on and I left and I came back and checked it and this is what I caught. Uh, pretty routine, very predictable. Uh, these Ospreys, everyone's here, all military aircraft are here, uh, uh, Black Hawks, Apaches, Lakotas, Sheriff, Police, Coast Guard. Um, so let me show you some other Ospreys here uh, because they're, uh, a lot of them are triggering the radar band, the X band, and I just want to revisit this and really just uh, make this clear. This is what the Pentagon is talking about. The X band, these UAPs can trigger X bands. Let's go to the next. Okay, October 23, look at this. This is a pre-launch. This is a, a pre-launch, a, a small, I call these a small UAP dragons because I thought they were dragonflies. Very predictable, these pre-launches because I know the Ospreys are coming. I'm watching them on planefinder.net. Most of the time, I would, will I say 30% of the time they fly with their GPS radio transponder turned on. So when I see them coming, I just turn on my camera, maybe five or 10% of the time, I will get a pre predictable pre-launch right off the same ground. That's the gas company, California Gas Company below. Just very predictable at the same angle. I know you've seen other uh, pre-launches with the uh, tower, with the drill uh, oil tower there. Very predictable. Here they are. They're just making a U-turn coming my way. Uh, they're getting recon. We're being re on our all aircraft. All aircraft on the planet apparently are being reconned. What we don't understand is why Marina Del Rey is infested with these small UAPs. Uh, every day, the, the Coast Guard was just here today, uh, November 2nd. I haven't even uh, edited the video yet. They spent an hour circling the water right there. Same location. All right, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, custodian file at Gmail. Send me your, anyone can record these. Send me your dragon video. Just hold your phone, landscape, zoom in halfway, 30 seconds. Uh, share your videos with me and I'll put them online. Look at this, look at this dragon way on top, just hauling. As a matter of fact, Boy, Eddie, that even stopped for, that was, that was like a zigzag. I think that was a zigzag uh, dragon. That's kind of rare. That's way out there too. Here we go, another, another zigzag. That's not a bird, not in su super, birds are su super easy to see, super. They're playing with these ospreys. They're just having fun with them. Probably half serious and half fun, who knows? Just who knows how these things are operating, how they're thinking. All I could do is take the video and put it out there. Look at that. He came off the ground. He kind of stopped. He's making a U-turn. Definitely, they're scanning our aircraft 100%. All right, let's go to the next here. Oh, I remember this one. This was, um, gosh, there's so many good Ospreys out there. Uh, yeah, although 2021, I remember having one five years ago, so I have a lot of Osprey videos. Same thing, they come right off the ground. Yeah, they fly by and pretty much, you could assume they're all being scanned. Uh, very predictable. How fast are they going? Roughly 2,000 miles an hour. I have over 4,000 videos. So with you know careful analysis of Google Map, Plane Finder, you know where the planes are. And you do know, and I do know the diameter, they're uh, approximately 10, 10 inches as it flew by a high voltage pole next to a brown Thompson ceramic insulator, which is 10 inches. So more or less, uh, very easy to predict. They're very predictable. You fly aircraft over Marina Del Rey, they come off the ground, they'll fly past the aircraft. Uh, feel free to ask any questions, comments, and I will answer them. Let's go to the next video. All right, super, Osprey. So we have a dragon here tagging this uh, Osprey in 2020, June 25. And you will see, um, 
there is uh, actually a real bug that will fly by. Here he comes. That is a real dragonfly. There you go. That's why I call them dragons. Because, and there's a bird. So we got a dragonfly, we got a bird. Birds are easy to see. Slow motion, everything's moving slow. You see the wing beat on the bird. Look at this dragon. Shoom. Just like that. Like a rifle shot. It gives you a clue. You see how slow the rotors are turning? That's how you know how fast these things are going. So again, real, uh, real bug there, real dragonfly with a real bird. That's, believe me, that's hard to come by. Very hard to record a real friggin' bug. Just very hard to do. So the bird's still in the picture. Look at this dragon, just hauling, just booking it. So good, I, uh, I know you wanna see those. Those are hard to come by, um, but we got lucky on that day. Let's go to the next video. Okay, super, uh, 2023, not too long ago, August 15. Osprey's coming in right there. He's over Venice Pier. Venice Pier, which is in front of Marina Del Rey. Look at this, twin dragons. One on the bottom, one on the top. Very, that's why you do not want to zoom in too close. If you zoom in too close, you're going to zoom out the dragon. So you want to be landscape, uh, midway. You want to record for 30 seconds. You can go to an airport, you can record airplanes, helicopters. I'm getting video from all over the world now. I'm just, this is, this is just getting easier and easier. People are sending me visit, uh, videos and I'm gonna keep posting them as they come in, I'll keep posting them. But uh, more or less, this is the concept. Planet Earth is basically surrounded with these UAPs, these small UAPs. They're obviously uh, reconning the planet, the most logical reason why they're here. Okay, please remember to like, subscribe, comment. Now I'm gonna end the video. I'm gonna introduce you to a psychic friend of mine, uh, Glenn Falkenstein. I met him through my pharmacy. I had a pharmacy. I, I invented the first mail order pharmacy in the United States in 1986, and I met him through my pharmacy. Uh, he was easily the most gifted psychic that really ever that's ever going to live on planet earth it was just ridiculous his gift um so 1974 he did a radio show and uh, he did an experiment on uh, the fourth dimension and he said the fourth dimension was sound which threw me off because i'm thinking it's got to be time he said no it's for it's it's sound and he played this song uh, time in a bottle uh, just the instruments, not the music. And then he had people call in and say, hey, um, what happened? And I will play the original because he recorded all the, all his radio shows. And it's, it's quite amazing what uh, the collection, the library I have. But on this one uh, track, uh, the security guard at Mount Palomar Observatory, San Diego, he called in and said uh, he was expecting his watch to stop. And what happened was the main chronometer at the observatory, which the Navy uses to synchronize their watches, their clocks, came to a stop. That was uh, July 26, 1974. It just came to a stop. We don't know how it was repaired or how long it was broken. But they, uh, but the security guard called it in. I'm going to play the tape. The tape's kind of choppy. Uh, and then um, I'm going to play some interviews with some people that were commenting on uh, what the security guard was talking about. So I hope you like this. It's something a little different. I'm trying to get, uh, mix up the content, but also keep it not somewhat supernatural, paranormal, whatever you want to call it. I knew the guy for 25 years, it was very real. Um, for what it's worth, he was a code breaker in the Air Force, Iceland, 1948. And there was not one code that he could not decipher. So uh, that's uh, basically, as far as the Air Force is concerned, Glenn never existed, but uh, the guy was next, beyond next level. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. But let's play the tape. I hope you get a kick out of it. All right. Hello? Hello? Yes. Yes. Mr. Falkenstein? Yes. Yes. Uh, 
My name is Joe Makarovs, and I'm with the Mount Pal Palomar Observatory, and I'm the night watchman here. All right. And I go on. I right, just give your just give your. Uh, uh, by the way, if you're calling, just give your first name. Is all. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, I am the night watchman, and I, my shift goes on at six, and I always listen to your program, and I carry my little transistor radio around as I make my tour, and uh, we. I tried it with my watch. <laughs> Call me and tell me that they that they heard the show and uh, are fascinated with it. Uh, did anyone that's uh, sitting in front of me hear that last Friday show, where we well, a couple? All right, uh, we had two or three people wave their uh, wave their hands. We stopped watches, didn't we? Did did you uh, participate in the experiment with us? Uh, were you at home? Did, did did anything happen? Any of those people that heard that Friday show? Did any of your watches stop? The two or three? No. All right, because we had uh, people calling from all over the city, uh, people who had old watches that uh, that just stopped. Uh, and uh, what? Yes, you ra raised your hand. Oh, come on in. Stand over the. Come on over the microphone so we can hear you. Good. All right. And uh, uh, we have talked, and just, just give your first name. And uh, Briefly, I was very impressed at the uh, gentleman who called from the Palomar Observatory, the oh, clock yes. that uh, was to, they used for setting all the other clocks. It stopped. It runs all the time, but it stopped. <laughs> we, got, we got all kinds of calls yes. uh, from, uh, from all over. Yeah, he was a guard, and I guess he was uh, checking his watch, trying to, uh, uh, checking his watch, trying to make it stop. Uh, yes, and then... Uh, uh, he looked around and looked at the chronometer that they had there, and it had stopped. A and then we got calls from, oh, my, uh, people that had spoons that were bent. Somebody had something dematerialize. Something had something levitate here in the studio. We had a young man who was sitting in the front row, and uh, uh, something started, I guess his uh, wallet or something he had in his lap just started levitating, and uh, all kinds of things. If you if you heard that show, it was quite wild. And, of course, Hal Jacks was with me, and uh, it was, a, well, it was a fantastic show. We'll be planning another one of those shows uh, in about three or four weeks. Uh, all right, we're going to take a short break and be right